This podcast is sponsored by ORCHSE Strategies, an industry leader in developing innovative and sustainable approaches for protecting workers and the environment. ORC membership includes EH&S vice presidents, directors, and senior managers from over 120 large global corporations in 20 different industry sectors. Many member companies like General Electric and Alcoa and GM and ExxonMobil and DuPont and Duke Energy and Siemens Healthcare Diagnostics and Allergen and Procter & Gamble and 3M have very well-established reputations as industry leaders in eh <laughs> That's like reading the greatest hits list. The value provided by the organization comes from harnessing the collective wisdom of all of these members and from the guidance and facilitation and expertise from the staff with decades of experience in eh If you're interested in learning more about the unique opportunities available through ORCHSE, please contact Linda Haney at 202-510-0509. Or you can pop Linda an email at lynda.haney at ORCHSE.com. That's Linda, L-I-N-D-A dot Haney, H-A-N-E-Y, at O-R-C-H-S-E dot com. Now, the podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Pre-Accident Podcast. I am your host. <laughs> well, let's see. This should go... Nee, nee, nee. Okay. So we're kind of deep into fall, which is my favorite time of year. You know this because I talk about it all the time in the podcast. It's the best time to be in New Mexico for a million reasons, but the least of which is not. How was that for an awkward sentence construct? Um, the smell. New Mexico smells amazing in the fall because they roast chilies. They burn pinon. Um, there's just a lot going on aromatically. And it's kind of fun to be here because, well, you know, it's just nice. The nights are cool. The days are warm. It's sunny and beautiful and everything's grand. That's how it all goes. Today's podcast is kind of interesting. You're going to like it. It's a conversation. Bob Edwards led a conversation with Marcy Frazier and Terry Czar uh, from Mississippi Lime, which is in Missouri. It's, I know, it sounds like it shouldn't be, but the Mississippi River is a huge part of Missouri, so it kind of makes sense, right? And it's a discussion really around their journey so far. So we've really kept up with Marcy and and the New View journey she's been on because she's so much fun on the podcast and people love her. This one's nice because she brought her exec in, and so it's a really good chance to listen to this conversation um, between the exec and what the exec's thinking, because Terry's, you know, at a different place on the pointy stick, what Marcy's thinking, and then Bob facilitates it beautifully. I think you'll find this to be a very, very fun little podcast. Sit back and enjoy, that's for sure. Thanks for listening, and no matter what it takes, tell your friends to listen. I don't care how you have to do it. Sky riding, um tattoo uh what else would be good uh inside of bottle caps that seems like a great way to advertise can sides there's tons of ways to get the message out there but the more the merrier and we're starting to have a little impact i'm so proud of you guys the world's getting safer and fewer people are getting fired for dumb reasons which is kind of why we listen anyway right so reliability is important process is important so is the organizational journey and that's today so sit back relax and enjoy the podcast conversation on organizational journeys with terry marcy and bob so i'm marcy frazier i'm the national director of safety for mississippi line company and been on the podcast a couple of times yes already. So yep. it's great to be back thank yep. you for having me yep and my name is Terry Zarr, and uh, I'm the VP of Operations for Mississippi Line. And we literally have Terry cornered. That's how we had to get, <laughs> to get this podcast. We had to corner him. He's in a it's corner a of the conference room. That's is. right. Yeah. So um, one thing that I wanted to talk about just for a few minutes anyway is you, you guys were just practicing for a, a, a trade show you're going to next week, right? Tell me a little bit about what that trade show is and what's the importance of you guys going to talk at it. So the, the trade show is the National Lime Association. So it's all the lime producers in North America. And we get together at an annual show uh, where we review safety um, topics, safety innovation, uh, regulatory changes. Uh, we talk about the changing environmental world, 
We talk about not necessarily competitive issues, obviously, uh, because of antitrust, but we talk about things affecting the industry. So right. it's a good clearinghouse. But it's very specifically to the lime. <clears throat> it's all about lime. lime. And that's, so I, I initially thought it was like a mining conference, no. but this is all about lime. Correct. Cool. And then, so you guys are going to actually speak at this one, too. What's that all about? Yeah, so every year they put a call out for the membership to share safety innovations. So uh, our journey on the new view was an obvious choice for us to uh, speak on and to actually share the learning team's tool with the others so that they can get a taste of what it's like. Cool. And what I think is really cool is you're taking some of your team members from the learning team to go help do the presentation. Yeah, it's very exciting because the learning team was made up of both salaried and hourly personnel, and it's about the number one type of injury that we have in our industry, so it'll have wide application to the membership. Cool. Very cool. Right, and I believe that our hourly going to the meeting and presenting is indirectly or maybe directly an indication of the capacity we're building in our organization. So how many organizations have the ability to have hourly people come talk about the leading injury in their industry to the industry? That they are actually working on that making better. Right? actually working on driving improvement. Yeah. So how, how could you possibly ask for more accountability, <laughs> right? I mean, we, I get this all the time from, from companies that are just getting started. They get all freaked out and say, well, what about accountability? How do you get more accountability than that? You've got the guys that actually are close to this work that deal with these kind of injuries helping you solve this problem. It's amazing. It is cool, isn't it? Yeah. So what I also think is interesting, just as a side note, I understand one of the guys has never flown before. That's so right. Get a, I mean, talk about a new experience. Actually, two of them have never, never flown, flown before. before. Yeah. And one of them never been to the ocean. Yes, right? the so, wow, what, what a great... So we're going to fix all of that. Nice. All at <laughs> one conference. Cool. Okay, it's Dot again. Sorry to interrupt. They had a nice little discussion about the conference, and then they broke right into learning teams, but somehow I messed the file up. This is part of the joy of doing a podcast. You don't even know the behind the scenes of this. You should go for a special tour, a wine-tasting podcast studio tour. Um, and they started talking about learning teams, and Terry started talking about where they were using learning teams, and he expanded it beyond really safety. So we're going to jump in as Terry's describing it. It sounds fine. It's not a problem, but it felt like it needed a little bit of a addendum to make it even better. So here we go. On safety, we've done environmental, we've done quality, and most recently we did one in preparation for our uh, contract negotiations on a labor relations issue, and people said, yeah, that's a natural thing for us to use to get there. Nice, because you're, you're learning, right? right? The whole goal is learn and improve. Right. It's a great method. <clears throat> and do, do you find that even in, I mean, you don't have to do a learning team for everything, just in, like you were talking about, in your normal conversations, you're starting to see this rubbing, this new view kind of rubbing off on just everyday sort of operations. Absolutely. Um, again, I think it just boils down to asking better questions, uh, making sure that we understand the, understand the situation and not jump immediately to solutions. Right, right. You know, it's about being effective, not necessarily being efficient. And I'm an engineer, so that's yeah, hard for me to say. That, that's tough one, <laughs> that's right, yeah, yeah. But we, we also, and you guys know this, I mean, I, I worked with a big corporation for 16 years, and we, we push so hard, and we have so many metrics, and it almost seems like we get so focused on the metrics that we lose sight of the fact that we have an amazing resource of brain power and commitment that our employees have in our organizations that are not just casually, they're, they're, they're very willing to get involved when we ask them and when we, when we include them. They got a lot of good stuff to bring to the conversation. Yes, and so it's it's really been an empowering thing for the employees to participate in learning teams. And uh, uh, at the presentation next week, one of our hourly employees that's going, the one that hasn't seen the ocean, he actually wrote himself uh, how he uh, participated and found that his opinion mattered. Right. Nice. And so now he's even more engaged than he was before, helping us do some micro-experimenting with PPE. And, and he's heading that up? He's yes, that up. <laughs> it's nice. fabulous. And, and advocating out to his co-workers there in the unit. It's, it's just been uh, even a I – couldn't, I couldn't have imagined that it would have turned out to be as good as an effect on that employee as it has. Very cool. I think it's also um, – and all of us are dealing with the changing workforces to the millennials. And millennials, and I know this is a broad characterization, but they want to be involved. They want to make a difference. They're looking for the greater good, not just about focused on me as an individual. 
And one of the one of the nice things about this approach is it it, it gives them an avenue to be engaged in, in helping drive that. And so we're seeing even a lot of our new employees, you know, get involved. Um, now John has been around a bit longer, which was even more, um, you know, was a bit more rewarding. But it was fun to see that. Yeah, I was. Uh, so I got to sit through your uh, your new hire training this week. So the compliance oriented kind of training, right? Yes. Which was uh, exciting. <laughs> and um, so I mean, I, yeah. So it's it's interesting because I've done all this stuff with OSHA kind of training through the years or whatever. But MSHA is another set of thinking and rules and regulations. But I even noticed in the conversations in the training, which is you know regulatory training, you have to do it. And I get all that. But even in the conversations there, I'm hearing a lot of this uh, more about involvement. More and you, and you as new employees, you said it this morning, Terry. You said to the guys that are brand new, you said your fresh set of eyes question stuff. You know, look at when you see things that don't look right and don't seem right. Ask. Don't just think you have to do it because somebody said do it. Yeah. And then Marcy, you said it earlier in the week too. You said I love new employees because you're a fresh set of eyes. I mean, that's unusual. Usually it's like, oh, man, we got new guys coming in. we got to get them up to speed. It's going to be a pain. But you see them as a valuable, right off the bat, a right. valuable asset. Yeah. I gave an example um, the other day of a new employee at another location who came in, questioned something. It was an obvious uh, potential area for injury, and we, 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 changed, you know, we changed the facility a bit. And, and probably avoided an injury, but it was a new employee. Just saying, right. geez, why do we do this? Yeah, yeah. Why do we do it this way? Yep. And you know, how could we do it differently? And that was that was very good, very yeah, positive, very rewarding. And and you're right. The the uh, it's it's a generalization, but I do see this with a lot of the new generation coming into work. They want they want to matter. They they want yeah. to be they want to be a part of something. And if we just say, look, I just need you to shoot that screw and plug that wire or shovel that limestone away. I mean, that's they want more than that out of life. And we're giving them that, and we're getting back because they're giving so much back to the to our organizations. So, what other things are are as you kind of move forward? What are you kind of doing with this? You said it's more than just safety. So you're moving this into other areas, or we have been. We've actually had when we started this, we included environmental from the very beginning. And there's a lot more. Um, there's a lot more um, energy, maybe so to speak, around this safety because it's it's. Um, Kind of viewed as um, it gets more status in our company, right. but we're changing that, we're shifting that. And when you start looking now at the number of people, and we have not just safety leaders and managers, but we have supervisors and hourly people now entering incidents and leading safety and, and leading um, uh, learning teams. We're getting that into, more into the environmental quality is a bit behind that, but coming. Right. And I expect that you know as we build our standards or expectations, mm -hmm. that will people will figure out when we have deviations and when they need to ask those questions. And then, you know, we'll get into either operational um, deviations or operational upsets where they'll, they'll get the mindset where they'll ask that, those, those better questions about how did this happen. Right. Yeah, and that's a nice segue into a recent learning team that was conducted where, you know, it was an operational failure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we see now that a lot of things that we originally thought were safety issues Bob, we were talking about this before, mm -hmm. how when you do the learning team, you find out it's really not a safety issue. It's an operational issue that yeah. we're, we're seeing that's you know manifesting in the safety arena or yep. in other ways. So it's, it's really some interesting learning that's going on with these failures and events that are occurring. And do you feel like it's starting to break down sort of the silo? I mean, we've been talking about silos forever and break down the silos and you know, all that stuff. But does you feel like this is actually making that happen at, at levels that maybe we haven't seen before? where it's not a quality problem, it's not a safety problem, it's operations. We're trying to get stuff done, and operational issues lead to all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that also ties back to that statement that's been said around you know, the work. I mean, employees that are performing the work don't perceive the work as yeah. quality work, safety, safety work, right, environmental. That's right. it's, that's right. it's work. It's work. It's that's all right. integrated into one. Yep. So. We're, the, we're the ones that separated it all out, right? right. Yeah. And any, we built all these departments. and uh, yeah. So any, any deviation, any upset can have any number of impacts. So the more right. the capacity we build in there, the, the more we lessen um, those potential deviations or the consequence of those to something right. that they, could, they have the capacity to manage. Yep. And so that's important. I, I don't know that we've... We'll have to do this a while longer. 18 months has not been enough time for people to start just thinking about work. They still think about what kind of incident that was right, as right. opposed to deviation. But 
we're getting there. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that I think they were all starting, and what I think is amazing about this whole process is, think about how much all three of us knew about this whole way of thinking four years ago. Right. right? right. Like, what is going on, right? Yes. I mean, we, we talk about this and see how much things have changed and how we're starting. We're, I think we're gaining different and deeper understandings because we're doing Right? I mean, we're actually doing this stuff. And so right. as we do it, we realize it's not a safety problem. We're not chasing it around like a safety problem. It's an operational It's work. It's what right. we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think it's a credit to Terry um, in the leadership that, you know, we're, we're thinking about human and organizational performance and learning teams in terms other than safety. It's right. giving them the permission to review events in that broad scope, right. and not just such a narrow scope of safety. Right. I think, you know, yes. And, and it just, it, and it all starts with my response, management response, leader's response does matter. I mean, right. it really does. Errors will happen. Mistakes will be made. Things will pop up. Now what? What can we learn from it? Right. And, and the learn first, then act mantra, um, you know, just needs to be something that we continually reinforce. Well, let's explore that a little bit because, you know, I'm excited about you being on the podcast because your peer group, you know, leaders at your level of the organization and their adaptation into the new view and and the struggles they have. Can you share some of that? What what insights can you share with the group around leadership's uh, journey into the new view? What, What things were difficult? What things were easy? What things made huge impacts with the organization? Is is there anything like that that you can? Yeah, did you did you just with? get it right from the beginning? And say, oh, I got this. Our journey, you know, it started with me at a, at, a, at a prior company, and our journey started with a a dissatisfaction with the ability to to get better. We had plateaued, as so many companies had plateaued, and we were trying to figure out what we could do that was broader than that. And it was the interesting thing is we were together as a group of safety professionals at an annual meeting where we kind of reviewed safety performance and and we were struggling and we said we got there's got to be something else. And we heard a little bit about this human performance thing, but we didn't know much and then and then we got introduced to Todd and um, and it just I don't want to say just clicked, but it made sense. Right, right. You know, it was it was it was not overly complex. Um, and it was something that was easily implementable. I mean, you could go do it once you understood the basics tomorrow. And even if it was not perfect, it was good and it was progress. And yeah. so progress builds on progress or improvement builds on improvement. And so the, the, the nice thing about the approach is just that. It's, it's not overly complicated and it's in, easy to implement and people understand it. And it, you don't have to have you know, 14 sessions with 13 paid facilitators. It's just understanding situations, people telling a story uh, so they can understand the situation and be, you know, be a little bit patient through the process. And and it's, and, and it's amazing what you learn. You, you really, the most fundamental thing is you have to care about people and you have to be curious about about what they do and want to understand how they're, you know, how they're struggling with what they do. Yeah. And I think you guys agree with the thing that we say a lot nowadays is that fundamentally people come to work to do good work. Yeah. I mean, right? I mean there are always some that don't, but, but, but if our assumption is, and it's a true, I think it's a good assumption. Most of the people I've met at your organization, they're here to make stuff happen, to get work done I, and to do a good job. I, you know, I fundamentally believe that if you create the space for people to do amazing things, some of them will actually exceed your expectation yeah, yeah. there will be some people that will disappoint you and the whole group in between will follow the lead and so right. why would you want to create the the environment or the space for some people and we've had some great examples and, and you met one of them the other day the person that led our um, rail safety improvement oh, Lord, yeah. where we created the space for him to use his knowledge and his passion around a topic to really Change the way we um, the way we did that work in a way that was much more safe. That we had a lot more capacity f- uh, to handle the uh, variation you see in those kind of activity. I mean, it's it's one of the things that you know was just a great story. And what I think is cool too, you've mentioned several times, is growth <clears throat> capacity. 
right? You, I've seen that in the short amount of time that I've been able to hang out with you guys is that the capacity is you're tackling bigger stuff and tougher stuff and, and it's not even scary. You're just like, well, let's dig in and learn. That was a, that, that, that could have been bad. Whoa, let's get in there and right. And so you just, you, you, I've seen that happen. And like you said, it's not been a long time period, but at the same time, it didn't happen overnight. Right. So it's not like you just right. start to switch and you're done. But every time you have that success and every time you make that progress, you do, you, we talk about it, Conf, build, confidence builds capacity. I mean, you're, you're seeing it here and you're the right size of a company, I think, to move faster than some of maybe some of the bigger companies. I mean, bigger ones have a tougher time moving quickly. Not always, but most of the time. So I think you guys are moving at a pretty nice pace. Yeah, our size affords us that bit of agility, but but I'll say it's not just the learning; it's it's the follow up, mm-hmm. the action items. Because you know you you can learn all you want, but if you don't do anything with that information, right. you, you don't really drive any improvements. Yeah. So, you know, it's a it's a credit to the organization that they follow up on those action items and actually complete them and, yep. and share that and communicate that out with the the rest of them so that we know we can see evidence yeah that's that's where the that's where in my mind keeping this is a great process we've got structure to support it i mean we have our safety organization we've got all the people we've run i don't even know i'm trying to think now um probably 10 or 15 percent of our workforce has been through the the uh, training the training for learning teams and we scheduled more and we're scheduled more and we're just going to keep scheduling them until I don't know why we would ever stop and then um, we we're using systems to make it easy for people to do right things yeah. to report things and to document follow up and make it accessible for everyone you know I think you have to have all of that something I want to thank you guys for is that as you've gotten more interested in near misses. You didn't put a metric on it. Like, I need nine near misses per week or whatever. I mean, oh, my word. What you're looking for is, as far as I know, I haven't heard of that anyway. What I've seen is they're, you're interested in, in sort of interesting near misses, good ones, ones that you can do something with. Because if you put a metric on it, I need nine a week, well, then you'll get this little ticky-tack stuff to fit the metric. But I think you guys value near misses as a great opportunity to learn. And uh, We certainly so. do. And I, I'm pretty pleased to say that the ones that we do get in – I mean, we review those. I know Terry does personally, mm-hmm. and there's not a whole lot of. I'm, I'd say I don't think there's any fluff at all right, to right. to what we're the data that we're getting in, right. and so they're meaningful and substantial, and that that we're you know that we're acting upon. Yeah. So so that's good. I I think that's really smart because I mean sometimes we find something nice and cool and we're like, well, okay, we need to measure it. And I mean, everybody that listens to your podcast has heard me talk. I get you know, a little talked about over too many metrics. I'm not saying don't have metrics. I'm just saying we have put so many in place that we start managing the metrics instead of leading people. And that's what you guys haven't done that. You have really built this in as a way of thinking and you're showing value to things like near miss reporting. So it's not a pile of them coming in, but it's good ones coming in. Yes. And and we're getting them, you know, not just we're getting them from all levels of the organization down the hourly folks. And then we have a system that allows them to directly input uh, you know, these near misses and other things that they see. And uh, I'll compliment Terry because he gets alerts or notices about these. And um, for those that are really good catches that, you know, are really substantial, uh, he'll personally contact the originator to nice. thank them for bringing that to our attention for further action. Yeah, it's actually, um, well, we had one just the other day. and um, But it's, it's fun because you're trying to reinforce people doing the right thing. You're trying right. to reinforce those behaviors where people took the time to discover something. And it's really fun when you find that it wasn't just they stumbled into it, but they actually had to do a bit of a work and they were looking for those deviations. And 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 boy, there's just, I mean, <clears throat> that's, that's time well spent giving people that positive feedback. Right? And I remember that one from the other day and the employee came back and said, just doing my part. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, he was very, he was very... He was very uh, humble about it, but um, but it was a, a very significant incident that was avoided through some good um, some good work on his part. So we're next. What are we doing? What are we? What's next? I mean, if you think about this, oh, do you hear there's a new book coming out? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I might have heard yeah, it from another yeah. guy, <laughs> another guy named Todd. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we we have. Um, We'll continue to focus on um, 
on the the near misses or the you know the the, synth, the, um, the you know the activity within the organization and look for uh, these passive signals, these weak signals, and get better at that. I think that's important. Uh, I think that it's important that we start doing learning from our jobs, the post job reviews, the four basic questions that you can ask and apply. Um, and and we started with and we'll continue with. Um, periodically, just asking or asking the open-ended question of our employees: What could go wrong? What bothers you? Where, yeah, you know, where did you struggle yeah. today? Yeah. And there's so much to be learned from that. And I, you can get overwhelmed by asking that question, but I still think every once in a while, it, it's a pretty powerful question to ask. And if, if you do those things and you just continue to work those, it'll grow, right? It'll grow yeah. on its own as you build the capacity. So it's not just asking the question for the sake of asking the question. It's also building into the building capacity into the organization as you work your way through those questions and, and what comes from them. I heard something really cool from one of your managers. Um, we were I was part of a learning team with you guys this week, and uh, one of your I don't remember he's like the second in charge of one of your sites. There's like several sites here on site, right? right. Anyway, he said uh, I really want my supervisors out in operations way more. Right, so less tied up with things that aren't bringing much value. So he's going to proactively with his team. And I'm sure you guys too, right? right? Start looking at are there some things here that we do that don't bring a lot of value? Because we have that in every organization. I do. I spend you know an hour a week on this, but it brings no value. He's going to look for some things to maybe pull off of those guys so that they can spend more time out there doing what really brings value. Yeah, that's like unheard of. That's exciting, right? Because you know what I ask this all the time. I ask leadership of companies. When's the last time we took something off of a manager, off of a supervisor? Yeah, that, so so everybody right. listening to the podcast right now, they're going to take this little snippet <laughs> and say, boss, listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. But we need to, right? It's time to back up a moment and say, hey, what can we take off of you? Because we're finding some of this stuff brings more value. You know, it, getting close to the guys that are doing the work, listening to them, learning from them, learning teams, all these things. Getting that, the weak signals. Get, get finding those weak signals and responding to them. And instead of us all being, you know, just sort of bombarded by back-to-back meetings and a thousand emails a week or more, you know. Right. I had a, one of my a, one, a plant manager that I know really well. He, uh, he said email is so out of control for him, he got in trouble. He was uh, checking his email while he was at church. And his wife's like, put that away. You're going to hell. Right? And so, uh, right? so it, it, that, but that's what's happened to this. It has consumed us. And so I'm super excited. I think the learning team that I was a part of, I can't wait to hear what all they do. But I'm really excited about that manager um, exper- micro-experimenting, like you called it, right. and seeing if he can actually find some, some things that don't really, really bring much value and say, hey, let's, let's stop that. Or let's cut that in half or whatever, and let's do more of this kind of stuff. Our, our first line, too, and yes, I'm aware that our first line supervisors – um, we did an analysis about a year ago in terms of how they spent their time and identified a couple of things that we wanted to cut out and yep. we're working our way through that. So yep. we had to put some systems in place to back out some of the manual things they were doing. And then the real question is how do we fill that void? And, and, and part of it is asking that question more time in the plant. The other question is what have we done recently to develop our supervisors to be able oh, to do no, more that's really good. That's right. So we're working our way through that over the next couple of months nice. or yet this year. Uh, to come up with some things that we can do to build their capabilities so they can have more impact in the plant. So you have to give Todd and me an update on that. Well, and, next time we're all together, so okay. get, cause, because that, it's like Marcy said, that's kind of unheard of. I mean, we just haven't really, we just keep thinking we can pile more on top of people and they'll just get it done. But in fact, we're not getting it done very well if we're just, you know, so this is going to be a cool experiment and it's going to be something we should share, not just amongst your business and your organization, but we should share it on other podcasts. So what do you think? Big thank you to Terry and Marcy and Bob. I thought that conversation was just a nice little kind of a glimpse. You know, if you could be a fly on the wall, glimpse to a conversation about where they are in their journey and how they feel about it. Remember, and this is so important. It seems a little wooly, but it's so important. The two things you manage when you manage reliable systems are confidence and capacity. We have to believe that we're doing the right thing and that the work we're doing is good and then have the capacity to actually fail as safely as possible. That is in that podcast all over the place, and that's cool. 
That's today's podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends to join us. As always, I hope you'll learn something new every single day. Bet you did today. Have as much fun as you possibly can. And for goodness sakes, good gracious, be safe. safe.